Hello, and welcome to week two of the daily devotional series from Sunset International Bible Institute. We hope that you have found this series of lessons in our time together to be encouraging and uplifting. I am Doug Reeves, Dean of International Studies, and I sincerely appreciate the time that we have together. The year was 1861, and the newly elected President Abraham Lincoln was making his way to Washington, D.C., where he would attend his first inauguration. On the way, he stopped for a few days in New York City, and there he met with Horace Greeley, editor of the newspaper. Lincoln knew that there was one question that was on the mind of every American, one ominous question. Is civil war inevitable? Knowing that this weighty matter was on everyone's mind, he somewhat directed the conversation with Greeley, and he offered him a short story, an antidote, as his response. Lincoln began with a story from his younger days when he was a circuit-riding attorney and how he and his companions would often travel for, well, across from one place to another for the next session of court. On this occasion, they were traveling, and as they encountered many small streams or creeks, that they realized that they were swollen from, swollen from recent rains. And each, with each crossing, it became more and more difficult to, to cross these small streams. And there was one thing that was on the mind of each of these attorneys, each of these young men traveling, the Fox River. If it was this difficult to traverse small creeks and small streams, what would they do when they came to the Fox River? How would they be able to get across? As darkness came, They came to a log cavern or tavern where they would stay the night, and there they met another guest. He was a presiding Methodist elder for that region. And in his role as the Methodist elder uh, over that district, it was his responsibility to travel. And so he often, he knew that there, and often traveled in all kinds of weather and all types of conditions. And so the young attorneys gathered about that minister, and they asked him about the present state of of the river. And he said, oh, yes. I know the Fox River. I know it well. I've crossed it often and I understand it. But I have one fixed rule in regard to the Fox River. I never cross it until I reach it. In 1861, our nation was searching for reassurance in dark times. The hope was that this newly elected president would be able able to somehow change the tide of a catastrophic war. Today, our nation is searching for reassurance and seeking a message of confidence, a word of hope. COVID-19 virus is an invisible threat, deadly threat that we know really know very little about. And humans don't do well with the unknown or with uncertainty. We like definitive answers. We want a time frame. If you tell me that this will last one week, okay. I can do one week or or maybe a few weeks. If you say one month, okay, I, I can do one month. But I want to know. I want to know what to expect. I'd, I'd really like a diagram or a chart that shows me a timeline of how and what's going to happen next. Because it's the unknown that is often unnerving to people. Many Americans really might have expected that there was going to be some quick fix or some quick remedy that this would all be over in just a few days. But why not? We can watch a two-hour movie where some apocalyptic uh, threat to mankind is averted within two hours or maybe, maybe even less time in a drama made for TV. But I do believe, I do believe a vaccine will be produced I do believe a course of treatment will be outlined that will ease the situation, but it probably won't be in the time frame that I would like or that we all would like or as soon as we like. So many are worried. We're worried about jobs. We worry about our immediate income. Others worry about the future, retirement, long term. And you may find yourself with those two words, what if? What if the virus spreads at unprecedented rate? What if the world slides into economic recession? What if members of my family are impacted by the disease? What if I personally become infected? What if 
a family member passes away, or me, what if? George MacDonald was a 19th century author and poet and a minister. And he once said, no man ever sank under the burden of the day. It is when tomorrow's burden is added to the burden of today that the weight is more than a man can bear. Jesus said basically the same thing, but just a little differently. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, he said, Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Paul would write in Philippians to the, the early Christians in Philippi. And in chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, he says, Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So Paul instructs us not to worry, but instead to pray. But Paul says there's one key ingredient in our prayer, thanksgiving. Perhaps Paul remembers all the stories he heard as a child growing up in Israel, stories of God's interaction with mankind in the Old Testament. And he might remember those numerous occasions when the nation of Israel faced some type of disaster, whether it be famine or war, invasion, disease. And he remembers how the God of heaven spoke to his people through his prophets. And God would first, he would remind them, remind them of the past, how he selected them through Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And then he would go on to remind them how he had always been with them, how he had provided for them, how he had delivered them, how he had redeemed them and rescued them out of slavery. And then how he took care of them and provided for them in the wilderness. And finally, how he brought them to their new home, their new land of milk and honey. And in those times of impending doom, God reminded them that he had never abandoned them in the past and he would not abandon them in the present and that they were not alone. That is a message that I think is very relevant for today is that we are not alone. And as we come to God with our fears and our doubts and we begin by praying to him, I suggest that we begin by saying thank you. Thank you to God for what he's done in our lives. In doing so, I think we, like the nation of Israel, are reminded of all the wonderful blessings that God has poured out upon us. We might thank him for our homes, our families, our friends, or thank him for our church family and our brothers and sisters around the world. And above all, we might say thank you for redeeming us, for adopting us, for loving us so much that he was willing to give his only son for us. And as we rehearse all the ways that he's blessed us and all the blessings that we've received, we're reminded of his love, we're reminded of his compassion, and we are, we are assured that we are not alone. And then, then I think we will find a sense of peace. We will find a, his peace, a peace that surpasses any world e economic panic, a peace that surpasses any virus or flu epidemic, a peace that is his that surpasses all understanding. His peace will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. The same Jesus who gave himself to redeem us, he still loves us and he will not abandon us. And today I suggest you spend time saying thank you. Saying thank you. Just remember all the many ways that he's blessed your life. And you know, if by chance that you joined us today and you have never known the peace of Jesus Christ and what he offers, then let me suggest that this is an opportunity for you. Reach out, ask questions, send us an email, send us a text message. We will respond. And I promise you that you can know his peace. And may God be with you and surround you with his love. God bless.